It never became a job, it became a pain in the ass. You were telling uh, about uh, that a new record is coming next year. Mm -hmm. um, do you sometimes feel the pressure to write another big success like uh, yeah, Trouble Going in 1994? Yeah, um, the, the, the pressure's not as much now because we're not on a major. I mean, whenever we were on the major label, we followed up Trouble Going with Infernal Love, which initially didn't do as well. And then Diane was a big hit, so it picked the sales up. But um, after that, the record company just wanted another hit album. And I think really as well, to be honest, a lot of the fans that got into the band through Trouble Gum, they left supporting the band because they only wanted stuff that sounded like that. But I don't think so, because I think the band would have split up if we'd have tried to make the Trouble Gum part two. Um, I think we either got bored. You know, we're intelligent people. We listen to all kinds of music. We like all kinds of things to do with the arts and culture. And to, I think if you're going to be a band like Motorhead or Ramones or ACDC, a formula band, then you have to be really comfortable in your own skin. And, and don't get me wrong, I admire those bands. Those bands do, do what they do. And they, they, like ACDC said, we're rock and roll. This is what we do. This is what you get. Um, and you know, sometimes I think it'd be great to feel that comfortable, you know. But I kind of like to explore things when I go into the studio, and I like to try and put different things into the album. And it, you know, it's probably acted against us, but. It still made me consider myself valid as a musician, as if I had just done something because people wanted to buy it. Is that something where you think a lot about, about your own authenticity, maybe? The well, it's, uh, the way I look at it is, this is going to sound bizarre, I used to work in a tire factory, right, and, uh, <laughs> where people made tires, put them in thousands and thousands, and trucks from all over Europe came and picked them up and took them away. And I got paid a wage, and I never thought once about those tires. I knew how to make them, I knew how to examine them and I got paid at the end of the week. And then I thought, well, with music, what I love about music is that the journey it takes me on. And if I was to start thinking, right, every album should sound like Trouble Gum, every album should have this kind of sound, and started writing that and then farmed it out, it would just, it would be a job. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be, and I think I couldn't do that. Don't, don't get me wrong, I mean, I see people that do that, mm -hmm. and I think, well, fair play to them. You know, if they're comfortable, they maybe have other interests that you know, they even be six months a year, they do the band thing and then they go and do whatever they, they've earned, with, they, they go and do whatever they've earned their money on. But. Was there never a moment that it became maybe a little bit, uh, uh, or slightly a job, or? It never became a job, it became a pain in the ass. It never ever felt like a job. And um, you know, I think as well, whenever, whenever people fall out, the music business, it, the worst thing I find about it is it, it, it is what it is and it's just a business like any other mm -hmm. business and, and, and we're not naive people but I think what it does is it can whenever egos are involved whenever whenever the male ego is involved uh, it can do terrible things to people it can make people greedy it can make people vain and you know I include myself in all of this I think in the past various band members we've had that haven't got on or we, we haven't got on and as I said in comes up it makes you realize you know at the end of the day, people can get bent out of shape about the smallest possible things. So I think that's the one aspect of it I would like to change. I would like to sort of, the way the band is at the minute and it has been for the past um, you know, seven years, is the way that I think the, the model should work. Yeah, and why don't we see that all around us, do you think? It's really simple. It's really, really simple. Rock and roll is a really simple, rock, well not even just rock and roll, contemporary music can be a really simple form of art. I'm not talking about the complexity of the, mm -hmm the chord progressions or the complexity of the rhythmic structure or timbre. I'm talking about if you want to make music with a bunch of people, those bunch of people are different, but when you get on you make great music, then if you're in a room rehearsing or writing and someone doesn't like something, what, what you do is you don't keep it inside for weeks because if you're a touring band of musicians, that will come out. You will be in Amsterdam three weeks into the tour, someone will be tired or stoned, someone will miss home, someone will want to not be there and an argument will start and then someone will say that song you wrote four weeks ago was shit I never liked that so we said when we got the band together with with Neil this time around we've had an, he's been in various bands in the past that have been the same as therapy situation we said that we'd always be very honest we would always tell each other exactly what we thought and we would resolve any problems we had there and then and not let them carry on and so far I mean that's seven years we've had we've had no rise you know anything that we don't like anything that bugs each other about each other we say straight away and it just clears the air and it makes it easier to get on with I mean whenever we were at the first lineup of the band you know things were left unsaid for years not even months for years and people are carrying that around inside themselves it's not good 
do you s maybe s still sometimes feel miserable about that? That things were not all not all things were spoken out. Well, well, now that I'm older, you know, I mean, I think about various. But there's three other pe members in the band at various times, and I like I like them all as people. If you take away the fact they were in the band mm -hmm. and all this bullshit went down, if I was to meet them in a bar, I would like them as people. I initially liked them as people when I met them. And you kind of think they, they probably initially liked me as well. But you know, whenever you get involved in a creative sense and, and friction and compromise and, or ideas of compromise, it, it begins to go quite sour. Uh, and I think, you know, it's like everything else, looking back on it, you sort of think um, none, of it, none of it's terrible. You know, when I, I, I don't dislike any of those people, and I certainly hope that they don't dislike me. But it's like you move on. But um, you sometimes think, you know, some of the things that you thought over. Um, as you get older and wiser, obviously, as, as Han, Harold Pinter, the English playwright, said what he liked about getting older was that um, the sense of grievance and grudge that he held against fellow human beings diminished. You know, um, grudges he held against fellow playwrights and other people diminished as he got older and more mature and wiser. And I think that's probably what it is. You know, now I'm in my fifth decade, I'm 45 years of age, and I think a lot of... Um, a lot of stuff that would have wound me up when I was 22 now doesn't bother me in the slightest. <laughs>